Hey, what's up? I'm here with Sam and Aaron from Junior Battles. Guys, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having us, yeah, sir. What's up? Thanks for playing. So you guys just did two songs acoustic, and uh, you're sort of joking around in between that um, you know, you're still sort of figuring it out. Are you guys comfortable with the record? You know what I mean? Are you guys, you know, how long have you been playing it now? Uh, we're, we're comfortable with <laughs> some of the record. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but we're not really comfortable playing it acoustic. That's kind of new. Like our older songs are a lot more based around just Aaron and I writing on guitars, so yeah. translating those into an acoustic setting is a lot easier. Whereas these all have like a drum and bass part in the yeah. middle. Yeah, yeah, we sort of worked it out on the fly. Sam would be like tapping his guitar, like yeah, it's not rehearsed. Surprisingly, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, do you, so you were saying you write it on acoustic, like uh, when you first write the songs, is that right or no? All of the songs kind of come together in different ways. A lot of the older songs, like on our first EP, uh, which is called Hotel Bibles, and on our 7-inch, a lot of those songs were written by one of us maybe alone an with an acoustic and then bringing some of the other one and us kind of working it out together, like in Aaron's apartment on acoustic guitars. But the new stuff, all the stuff on Idle Ages, is primarily written by the four of us all together, and that makes things like very weird to play when there's just two yeah. of them. Uh, which I think is a good thing, because we want, to, want it to be like everyone contributing and everyone, like we're a band and we're not just like, there's one or two songwriters and like we could cycle out the members. Like if we ever have to replace someone, it'll be so difficult. I don't even know if we could continue, you know? Yeah, yeah. I didn't really realize that either of the other guys in the band were any good until today. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big yeah. revelation for me. I guess we need them. <laughs> yeah, I gotta go apologize to Justin. I have, I have said some terrible things to him. Treating him so badly lately. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there a theme of the record? Because I guess I've listened to it for a while now, and um, I sort of get the impression that it's, it's a, a group of dudes who listen to music when they were younger and are growing up, but still have certain things uh, that they clo that they hold close to their hearts. Is that is, is that a fair analysis of the album? Yeah, I mean I seventeen, think, like right off the bat. You know what I mean? I think like we're we're in that sort of strange part in our lives where we're like, adulthood is now, and like <laughs> we're not ready for that. So it's like kind of reconciling everything that you believed in when you were young versus where you're at now, and like kind of you know taking a step back and being like. Is this making me happy, or are my decisions like the right ones right now? And like sort of second guessing, but also like realizing that just sometimes you just gotta like keep going. I don't know, like. Yeah, and it's it was kind of interesting because uh, Aaron and I were sort of writing things separately from each other initially. So like I was writing lyrics, and you know he would be writing lyrics. And after you know a couple of songs, it became pretty obvious that that was like the wow. thing that we were obsessed with at that time. That we were both just sort of up to our eyeballs in sort of terror over <laughs> our pending. Adulthood, <laughs> yeah, and our future and what are we doing with our lives kind of thing. So that was, we kind of talked about it and we were like, well, let's kind of roll with that. So then the, the last batch of songs we sort of tried to keep with that. So it's like a very loose theme, but I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely there and it's something that we really wanted to do because, I mean, I like a full length that kind of has a cohesive feeling to it. And I think that, that those ideas really kind of tie the record together sort of from, from the beginning to the end. Are you guys the same age? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Which is... 25. <laughs> yes. We have remarkable skin. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm 62. Yeah. 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 I was, I was a, a founding member of the Clash. Yeah. I was in the 101ers. Yeah. yeah. That's why people like us. So I don't know if people know that. You didn't mention that, but yeah, I was in the 101ers. Yeah, you guys go way back. Way back. Um, but I mean, um, I mean, like, the cover of the album, you know, paper and plastic, it's, you know, about the artwork as well. So is that, like, a sort of a, is it a suburb? Is it supposed to be a suburb? Yeah, we wanted to do something kind of interesting with the art just because that's what Paper and Plastic is all about. And uh, so we had our friend uh, Greg Pepper from Camp Pepper Designs put together something for us. And we kind of went in with this idea of, okay, it's a four panel layout. Let's choose four uh, geographical, I guess, locations that mean something to the band. So the, the front cover is um, a overhead shot of Justin's parents' neighborhood in Etobicoke. Okay. Inside cover is my parents' uh, house out, uh, you know, a couple hours north of Toronto. Um, and then the under the CD tray is Sneaky D's, which is yeah. a bar that we play at all the time and drink at and eat Great nachos. nachos at. Yeah. <laughs> and then the back cover is uh, our practice space. So like okay. all, of, all of those locations have some significance to the band in and a way. Was it a picture and then people drew the, yeah, the picture? Yeah, it's actually okay. a Google uh, satellite image. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. 
technology. We want Google to get ads with some dollars now, too. Yeah. 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 I think they owe us. We might owe them, actually. Yeah. <laughs> This happen. <laughs> uh, I think you know the other th the thing I really like about it too is that we, we wanted it to be sort of stuff that meant something to us, but also because the record is sort of about this evolution, like there's sort yeah. of signposts lyrically on the record where like there's songs about being 15, there's songs about being 17 and 23 and 25, and those ages all kind of come up on the record. And 48 and 48, 62, 62, and 62 yeah. all the time that, that we've <laughs> been alive. Uh, that in a way the record also the art sort of traces like what would be you know sort of your evolution as a person you know going from the country to the suburbs to this sort of pseudo industrial part of downtown to like sort of a major social corner and the idea of like when you first fall in love with music it's in your parents basement or it's in your house and your parents house and you're yeah. isolated and you're and you're kind of alone in that experience and sort of by the time you're older it's become this weird social thing or a weird part of your job or, or whatever it is. And, and that's sort of the evolution that we tried to trace um, you know, with, the, with the panels of art on the record. Now, your job, uh, your other job, I guess, is uh, you write and you interview bands uh, for Exclaim. And like, so what's it like to be on that side? Because when I interviewed you at Warped, I was saying it was like the weirdest experience of my life. Yeah, <laughs> you did well though. Yeah, it you was... did really well. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it's you know it's it's really great because I love to talk. Do you read your own press though? Yeah, I, I read I... I read my own I, I obsessively. We all read <laughs> everything. Like we'll get together at practice. And be like you see the kids' blog? What's the kid yeah. talking about? <laughs> We're probably the only people who actually read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. The kids' blog got four hits or got eight because we read it once, then we like went and showed our girlfriends. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, like I, I read everything that is written about us. I like reread interviews that I've done. I'm, like not because I'm a narcissist, but just because I'm sort of like, I, I don't know. I just find it so strange. But what happens know. when you get that bad, you know, when you get that bad review or whatever? Somebody says just something. Binge that's eating, you, just you know? like <laughs> box of box of Krispy Kremes. Yeah, <laughs> things get dark. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, like we hit, like we haven't had a lot of like really bad press, but as a result, when we do. We're always like, who's a kid think they are? Like <laughs> literally, even if it's like a kid on Twitter being like, yeah. don't really get this junior battles record. I'm yeah. like, you suck. <laughs> you're, you're just not trying hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll like look at their other tweets. I'll be like, well, the other bands that they like are crap, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're not co confident dudes yet. No, I mean we are. We're, we're, well, the album's getting like, I mean, people really dig the album. Yeah. Uh, and how? It, I mean, what's it like playing? I mean, you guys go into the states a lot, right? So why go into the states? I guess and not across Canada. Canada's really big. Yeah. Uh, and the cities are very far apart. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, you can do kind of southern Ontario and Quebec, and then after that, the drives get really, really long. And unless you're. <laughs> right, and you guys have that van. <laughs> right, our van, <laughs> which uh, is, didn't even get us here today, yeah, right. is sitting at Osmonton and Bloor right now, uh, yeah. kind of on fire. Yeah. So, which is par for the chorus for that van, though, right? It's a 1989 Chevrolet Gladiator camper van. It's yeah. a beautiful beast, but it is a beast, and it is unwieldy, and right now it is not being wielded. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, Canada is, uh, I love I love Canada, obviously, I don't even feel like I have to say that, but it's just like, it's it's far, like it's hard to do those drives unless you're a popular band or you're with a popular band, and we haven't had an opportunity to be on a big package tour and sort of say like, we're gonna get to Calgary, because right. it's hard. Yeah, so yeah, for yeah. us, it's just, it, it sort of, it, bottom line, it just makes economic sense to just do that East Coast corridor. But it's kind of cool to get down into the States, though, because a lot of bands, I think, uh, Canadian bands anyways, they sort of just stay in Canada, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's there's a lot more of a support system for, like, mid-level punk bands, which is kind of what I think we are. Um, just because there's more people, there's more bands, more there's, there's, you know, it's, it's cheaper in terms of gas and food and beer, and, uh, you know, it's just more economic just to go down, and you'll find that there will be a lot of house shows and house venues, which is something that Canada like severely lacks. So you'll, there'll just be a kid who like will put on an all ages show in his basement like once every two weeks, yeah. and there are like ten or you know five or ten of those in every city that you go to, and they'll crop up. They're, they'll pop up for a while and then get shut down, but there's still like always someone there to start a new one, and that's kind of like almost absent from. Canada, really. Yeah, there's a couple of great places. Like, there's a place in London called the Dude Ranch, which is run by. It's a couple pretty notorious. Of, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. A couple of our friends of ours in a band called Stay Home run that place, and like we played yeah. there. I was there for Bum Music Industry played there like two weeks ago. And that place is amazing, and that's like, I wish there was more of that. Yeah. You know, in Canada, but it's hard. I mean, like, there's no house shows in Thunder Bay that I know of. I'm sorry, people in Thunder Bay. <laughs> yeah. Shows. But by no by no means is it easy for us to get into the states. Like there's so many yeah. hoops that we have there's to borders. jump through. And there's a there's a border. They take there's that border, border yeah. super seriously. Border, yeah. 
So yeah, we did it like a, we had, every time we have to do our visas, we have like a big paperwork party, and it is the worst party. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> it's a not. It sounds a good like party. a really fun party. It it's is. awful and expensive. And yeah. Um, I have to ask. Okay, last two questions. I have to ask about Damien from Fucked Up being on the album. Uh, I think that might be my favorite song, not because he's on it, but I really like the horn section at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, just talk about you know him getting on the record, I guess. Well, I mean, I've known Damien for years just through the kind of punk scene and. and uh, interviews and I've interviewed him you know a yeah. million times so we kind of you know we wanted to do something more special with the record so we kind of had this list of people that we wanted to try to invite so we ended up getting Franz Nikolai uh, who is a great solo artist and he was in the whole set he was in Against Me for a little yep. while and stuff uh, and Bond then the music Matt industry. Keegan from Bob Music Industry plays the horns on that song and another song and so I just sent Damien an email I was like hey uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce Dickinson also is on the record Bruce Dickinson yeah. is on the record yeah he does all the really high stuff yeah. uh, it's super cool <laughs> And then Carrie Kane does the yeah, solos, right, yeah. all the yeah, solos. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with Damien, it was just like I dropped him an email. I was like, hey man, like, do you want to do this? And I didn't hear back from him for like a month. And I got like, I'm so sorry, let's do this. Yeah. And like, it was kind of like we wanted the guests to be, to all contribute something that none of us could do. So like, we have like pretty girl voices and can't scream like Damien yeah, can, yeah. you know, his crazy bellow. And then we can't play horns, we can't play organ or piano or anything. So it was nice to get them in and add something to the record that otherwise would not have been there, so. And Damien's such a pro at like that voice, which is kind of what's so amazing about watching him work. Like he just yeah. gets in there and he kind of does this. He's so big, like I can't even really impersonate it. But he'll like do it, he'll be like, okay, well now I'm gonna yeah. do it this way. And there's a great like just low yell kind of right in one of the builds towards the end of that song, which you can't even really tell what it is, which is just him being like, yeah. um, do you guys wanna just play the song through and I'll just like do some stuff? Yeah, the, it comes in at that point. Yeah, yeah, so just him going, you just in the booth being like, like summoning I don't know what kind of power and just being like, Ugh. it was insane. It's it's you know and it's good too because like we really like like we're all fans of his and we're fans of all the people who are on yeah. the record and I think like as a as a pop punk band in some way you also I I mean maybe it's just because I'm insecure as we've discussed but like I feel the need to assert in some way that like I've listened to bands that aren't just like. Blink-182 right, in my right, life, right, right, right. you know? Uh, and, and I think that sort of, in a lot of ways, sort of his involvement in that was important just because it was like, this is also something that is like a part of what we do. And so, you know, I think people can, you can kind hear of, that, I think. On the, I, yeah, yeah, I hope so. And I think that that just sort of helps people sort of look at it through that lens so you're not just hearing it as like, you know, uh, uh, the main kind of tribute act and, you know, you can kind of hear those other influences, I hope. Totally. Uh, what else are you guys listening to these days? Oh, boy. Um, I just uh, illegally downloaded Watch the Throne. Oh, yeah. Which is really, it's good. Yeah. It's totally good. Yeah, it is good. Uh, I've been on a huge, because I've just been on this like ridiculous like Eminem kick, because I got in a huge argument mm. with Jeff from Bomb Music Industry when they were in town about Odd Future defending them and sort of being like, well, do you listen to Eminem? Do you listen to like anything else that's cool? Uh, <laughs> not that I you know, necessarily know who's right in that big argument, but it just sent me off on this like deep spiral of like Eminem. nothing but Old Eminem. Old Eminem? Yeah, well, all of it, like yeah. all of it. Yeah. And so that's basically been it. It's like good. nothing but Eminem and like just, yeah, that's it. Crap. Yeah, I don't know. We, we listen to a lot of like <laughs> top 40 and hip hop in the van because we know we're going to get to the show and listen to a lot of like punk yeah. aggressive music so like we end up just like turning on you know or the radio and just radio like works grooving out to radio. whatever you know the new drake single which is really good yeah I just, i'm just picturing you guys like rolling through the states listening to hip-hop it's <laughs> that's yeah. that's literally all it is like we have this thing where when we have to do night drives uh zorgel has to sit shotgun and uh he adopts the job persona sort of mystique of what we call night DJ. And night DJ <laughs> just somehow miraculously, better than any of the rest of us, will find like the it's biggest fun, hits. Yeah. Yes. It's just like I have a, a nose for it, just like scrolling through the dial. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Like a, like, a, like a sort of truffle pig finding hits. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm stoked that the radio works for you guys. That's it's great, pretty great. Yeah. Well, because yeah, the, the iPod thing barely works and the CD player doesn't work, so you're kind of just stuck. Yeah, it. it's such a loud van, too. Like, <laughs> if you even bother trying to set up the radio transmitter, it's just like. Yeah, you'll start to listen like, to like a podcast and you're like, I don't know what's happening. So, but like Jason Derulo, that guy yeah. comes in loud and clear. Nice. Yeah, like top 40 music just cuts through so well because it's all so compressed <laughs> yeah. and like clean sounding. So, it's the only thing that sounds good on our. Horrible speakers. We, we spent our very first tour in the States every night driving was just like the search for Party in the USA. And this was like a year and a half ago when that song was still old. It was already not yeah. really cool anymore. 
but like literally every night, it was like, how are we, we're, it's our first tour in the States, like how are we not hearing part in the USA? And I remember the last drive sort of at night going from Grand Rapids home. It came it on? It was like it came on and it was just like this like, <gasps> like it just yeah. fills you with power. Guys in the back were sleeping and they're like, oh, it's, it's happening. <laughs> yeah. Like you got like just four dudes in a van like so haggard from two weeks of touring, like, so I put my hands up. And it's, it's the best, it's the best. And then you guys were pulled over. Yeah. yeah. And the cops started partying with us. Yeah. It was like a music video. Yeah. It was great. Sexy lady cop. It was awesome. Uh, Blue Jays. Blue Jays. Yeah. yeah. Laurie. Yeah. Laurie. The grand I had to say that to you. So. No, no, it's all good. Yeah. I didn't watch the game yesterday. I was watching the highlights last night. It was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. I thought, I thought of Sam. Like, I got to ask Sam about yeah. the Blue Jays. That, I just mentioned it. We just had to mention it. Blue Jays are a sports team in Toronto. Yes. And they're very... Well, they're going to be good next year. Yeah. Next year's our year. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, you so much, man. Cool. Yo, thanks for yeah, thanks. Uh, coming in, and good luck with the record, and good luck with the band. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Explore Music wears English Laundry Apparel.